In this video, we are going to look at the output from the points to catchment plugin, which produces uh, all the catchments belonging to outlets. The only problem is that uh, we lose the attributes from the original points. So in this video, we are going to add those attributes back again to the polygons. In order to do that, we have to look at uh, the data carefully to make the right choices. So we have here the uh, outlets that we use to generate all these polygons. And uh, let's just take one, this area 90, and have a closer look at the polygon and the point. Here we see that the point is in the centroid of the original pixel that was used, and it's not at the boundary of the polygon. So it will be hard to join uh, the point to the polygon. And another problem is that the geometry is having some problems. Because normally there should be just one feature for the catchment and if I zoom to the layer we see that uh, because of the factorization of the raster there are these artifacts so we need to remove that by using uh, dissolve so that's the first thing that we will do so in the vector menu we go to geo processing tools dissolve and there uh, we're going to run it in batch because our, our polygons are in separate files. So we're going to choose first uh, the files here. You can select all, make sure that you remove those uh, outlets from the list. And then wait a little and they will all be added here in rows. And then we uh, can check the box to load the layers on completion and we define an output name. And uh, let's make uh, shape files like the original call it dissolved and then I can use fill with numbers to add a number to the file name so there will be unique file names in the recording I speed it up a little bit so it's now dissolving all these layers Okay, it's done and then we can uh, check in the attribute table because the numbers of the files don't relate to these area numbers um, we just do in a sample the checking always good to check the output we see this one has nicely one feature as we expected let's check another one also one feature so dissolve we can assume that it worked so to make the next step easier i'm going to merge the polygons find it under data management tools, merge vector layers and then I'm going to select all these dissolved ones so I can select the ones that I don't need and uh, toggle the selection and the same for the snapped centroids click OK and then define an output for the merged file it will be a shape file, let's call it uh, merged There we go, that's quite quick. Now it's one uh, big file. It's no problem that the catchments uh, overlap here. Um, just for the visualization, it might be an issue. I move it to the top so we can uh, look at it, put the outlet points on top. And there we see that uh, the largest catchment is there. Uh, visible but if I check the attribute table you can also see the individual catchments and there it is and we also see the file name uh, of the original file before it was merged the next step is that we want to snap these outlets to the boundary of the polygon and there we use uh, snap geometries to layer from the processing toolbox Choose the snapped centroids as input layer, use the merged one as the reference layer, and put the tolerance on 30 meters, so the pixel size. Because we can only be uh, a pixel wrong, even half a pixel, so 30 meter will be okay. And uh, snap to the closest point, and all the other points it will leave where it uh, is. Save it to a file. And then uh, run it. OK, 
Okay, let's uh, check the result and here we see uh, the original file in uh, purple and the green ones uh, where it has moved. And the next step is to join the attributes by location. So as a base layer, I choose the merged file. So it will copy that one and it will add the attributes of the join layer snapped. And the rule that we're going to use is touches. So only when it touches each other, which is when the outlets are touching the boundary of the polygons, and it should because we snapped, then uh, it should join, create a separate feature for each matching feature, but discard the records which could not be joined. So those are the points that have not been snapped to the boundary in the previous step. And I call the output joined. I don't want to see the unjoinable features. So uh, we can uh, run this. And here we have the result. So the catchment polygons with the attributes of the points joined to it. So we need to check if that uh, indeed happened. So let's uh, select one of the subcatchments of joint. And we need to look, of course, at our snapped points to see if they have the same uh, values. You can see that there are multiple points around the catchment, so we need to know which one is the outlet. So let's just try, because I don't know in this case, and open the attribute table. And show only the selected feature, dock it, so we have it here in the, under um, the map. And do the same here for snapped. And also show only the selected features. And this one is ID 406. So that's not the outlet because the polygon is 391. But let's then uh, choose the other point and see if that's the right one. And there we see 391 with the polygon 391. So that is the one. And the other one belongs to another one. Also here the uh, polygons are uh, overlapping. We can split them using from data management tools under vector the split vector layer tool. And we can uh, use the unique ID which will be used also for the file name. And there it's useful to use that uh, object ID which is the same as the river ID I think. And then um, choose an output directory. We can also choose output file type here. Let's change it to the original uh, shape files that we had and uh, run it. There we go. We uh, manually have to add the result. So let's go to the browser panel. We don't see it there yet because we need to uh, refresh the browser. Click the refresh button. And now we see those object ID and with the numbers. Add it to the project. And let's uh, check the result. So we started with this uh, area 90 example. Let's open the attribute table. And there we see that it had these uh, two features. And now um, we can also find the point that corresponds to that. So if I go to the original centroids, then it's uh, this point. Select it, open the attribute table, and then uh, show selected features. And this one has ID 258. So then that would mean that if I open object ID 258, we see the same uh, catchment, so that's okay. And then we should also see the same attributes. And there we see object ID 258 with everything added to it. So this means... Uh, for in this case at least that uh, this all went well and you need to check there might be uh, some exceptions but uh, this was our purpose we have joined the attributes of the point layer with the polygons